What we want to do in this exercise is take a quick look at the last set of options made available to us on the graph toolbar, starting first of all with the node type filters. For this to work, we will need to make certain that we have the node filter button enabled, this being the magnifying glass icon, as it is this that will make our two drop down boxes available, each of which contain a number of useful options that can help highlight nodes in our graph thus making finding them easier and so subsequently quicker to edit. If we drop down the first box here entitled Node Type, we see that what we get unsurprisingly is a list of all of Substance Designer's node types, with the default setting being to show all, which is why all of our graph is currently highlighted. If we set this to something like Blend, however, we now see the vast majority of the node structure become greyed out, with only the Blend nodes being highlighted. This means that we can quickly click on the node that we want to edit, press the F key to frame in on it, and then make our adjustments. Let's just click in some empty space though, and press the F key in order to frame the entire graph. Now, of course, we can repeat that process as many times as we need in order to quickly find all of the node types that we want. Let's also just set the drop down back to all here. Now we have a very handy button in the form of this camera icon available that when clicked lets us export a one-to-one -one image of our entire graph, which is very useful for sharing with a team or work colleagues or even giving something back to the Substance community. The Tools dropdown lets us export via the Export Outputs dialog, with the same dropdown also giving us the option to export to a PSD file should we want to use Photoshop to further augment our texturing work. Once clicked, we can set a destination and name via the destination button. And if we select some nodes, I will just select the outputs here for ease of use, and then use the add layers from graph selection option, we can easily build our own Photoshop document that houses groups of node outputs, allowing us to make edits in Photoshop if we want or need to. Cancelling that option and coming back to the tools dropdown, we also have a very handy clean function that removes all nodes not connected to a flow that is affecting the final outputs, meaning we can quickly organize our graphs without having to manually go through and remove nodes that are no longer contributing to the material, something that could potentially be a big time saver when it comes time to clean up and make things as clean and efficient as possible.